So, dear brother, uh, last week we studied about the soul, that the uh, yes. soul uh, dies, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, last week we also saw some of the misconceptions uh, in the Bible, which yes, sir. the picture uh, that the uh, soul doesn't die. Yes. So, we saw about uh, a dead Samuel uh, coming back to life because of a witch uh, who raised him from the dead, uh, isn't yes. it? So, what, yes. how was it? How is, uh, is it a real Samuel who came back to life? No, sir. That is liar, Satan, sir. Yes, very good. After that one, we saw the second thing that uh, uh, Moses and Elia they came yeah. and stood with Jesus. So what was yeah. it? It is vision, sir. Vision is not real. It yeah. is imagination. Very good, very good, very fine. And then the thief on the cross, did he go to the heaven? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the, when I read this, I'm making confusion myself, no, sir. <laughs> I read twice uh, your note also. <laughs> so, ah. uh, it is some clarification about this, sir. Okay, okay. See, the word paradise, that is the one which yeah. makes us a lot of uh, confusion. The word paradise yeah. doesn't mean heaven. Nowhere in the Bible yeah. is it given that paradise is heaven. Yeah. So, paradise means what? Yes. If you see in the Bible, in Revelation 2nd chapter, verse 7, it is given that uh, there is a tree of life in the middle of uh, paradise. Yes, sir. I read. Revelation 2, 7. 2, 7, okay. Hmm. 2, 7, uh, I'm going to read. Hmm. Brethren, I write no new command. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Revelation 2, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Hmm. Uh, 2, 7, okay. Hmm. Uh, he, he that hath an ear, let him hear what? The spirit said unto the churches, To him, what overcomes will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Correct. So, so there is a tree of life in the middle of the paradise of God. So, paradise means what? There is a tree of life in it. Now, where else do we read that uh, there was a tree of life? Do we read anywhere that there was a tree of life? Genesis, sir. Genesis. Okay. So Genesis, uh, again, two, uh, second chapter, verse uh, uh, eight and nine is given there that uh, there was a tree of life in the middle of the Garden of Eden. So the year the paradise uh, means uh, Eden of Garden. So that means what? Uh, uh, that means uh, that a thief is going to back uh, to Garden of Eden. No. When Christ returns at his second advent, the entire world will make a beautiful garden. He is going to convert the entire earth like a beautiful garden. When all the people are going to be resurrected, all the dead are going to come back to life, all the civil is taken away, and you know, Satan is bound. So all the animals will be a pure vegetarian. The same condition that was there in the first world, uh, before Adam sinned, everything will be restored by Christ. So that's what uh, Jesus said uh, uh, to the thief, uh, that uh, you shall be with me in my kingdom. Uh, thief also requested the uh, Lord, saying, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. So Jesus said, okay, I will remember you. So that's what is simple means that uh, it doesn't mean that I went to heaven the same day. Okay, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. Revise once again. Uh, yeah. Listen to the audio. So any clarification, you can WhatsApp to me at any time, brother. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, good. Then next, uh, apart from that one, we saw uh, how uh, as, uh, Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison. So, who are yes. the spirits in prison? That uh, they are uh, uh, these were uh, uh, these were disobedient during the days of Noah. Yeah, Noah, Noah, Noah's, Noah's time. Yes, sir. they uh, are uh, uh, fallen angels, sir. Very good. So, Father Angel, sir, how did yeah. Jesus preach? Uh, was it a literal preaching or was it by example? Example, sir. Example. His lifestyle itself was a great preaching. Good. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, lastly, we saw uh, about uh, Matthew 27 chapter, where after uh, the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, many graves were opened and many uh, dead bodies came back to life and went to the holy yeah. city. Yeah. So, yeah. it is actually speaking about whom? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, they are, when where Jesus uh, crucified, they, that is Golgotha. Uh, 
uh, and there were uh, some lepro leprosy people who stay in there and they came back uh, when they found they are clear no sir correct Unclear. very good very yeah. good these are the uh, lepers who were treated as dead to the society when yeah. jesus died on the cross uh, after his death surely there must be a heavy rain the rain water would have mixed with the blood of jesus and would have come and uh, poured upon all the lepers who were uh, uh, in the grave so automatically what happened if you see dear brother and uh, all the leper, leper leprosy were totally cured so this is speaking about the lepers who were cured and came to the holy city and showed it to the high priest okay so good so i uh, hope that uh, and uh, nice that you understood so many things now today we are going to see uh, a important subject uh, that is a uh, subject about a uh, rich man and lazarus so apart from that there is only one thing that is used generally to prove that a soul doesn't die and that is the uh, uh, rich man and lazarus that is given to us in luke 16 chapter so hope you have read this one so we'll quickly go through the story uh then we'll uh, understand what's the meaning of it okay brother so luke 16 okay. chapter verse 19 brother read from verse 19 to uh, continue brother ha huh. from 19 okay ha uh. luke 16 19 correct uh, there was a certain rich man uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day and uh-huh. Ah, read, read. Continue, brother. Read. Ah. And there was a sort, certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell fell from rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So, oh, see, if you see, here it is speaking yeah, yeah. about a rich man and a beggar named Lazarus. Uh, the rich man was uh, so rich uh, that he was. Uh, wearing good clothes and uh, eating uh, very nicely and uh, yeah. at his door there was a beggar by name lazarus he was in such a pathetic condition that his body was full of sores was full of wound and he was yeah. waiting for the crumbs to be falling from the table of the rich man so that he may eat and uh, dogs used to come and uh, lick his uh, uh, wounded sims now next what happened then continue hmm. and to and it came to pass that the beggar died and was cried by the angels in, carried by the angels into abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and in the hell of lift up his eyes being in torments and said abraham's offer of and lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame See? here what happens uh, a day comes both of the persons die so if both of the persons die you see it says uh, that uh, uh, where did the rich man go where did the rich man go hell sir ah okay and where did the Beggar Lazarus go. Abraham's uh, bosom, sir. Ah, uh, Abraham's uh, bosom. So if you see, uh, it says uh, that uh, the rich man was also dead and buried, and uh, he was, uh, uh, you see, in uh, hell. From hell, he lifted his eyes, uh, and uh, he was tormented there, and he saw far off uh, who the. rich uh, the beggar lazarus who was in the bosom of the father abraham and they requested to send uh, uh, somebody especially lazarus that he may dip his uh, finger and quench his uh, thirst okay now what was the reply that was given by abraham verse 25 huh? but but abraham said son remember that though in the lifetime received the good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comfort and though are tormented hey, but he says uh, abraham said uh, son remember that uh, you received good things in your life uh, and he received uh, evil things uh, but now it is uh, ulta you see now it is vice versa that he is comforted yeah. and uh, though uh, tormented and more he says uh, 
in verse 26 there is a huge gap and nobody can pass from this one to that one and from the, that one to this one read brother verse 26 and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence mm, nobody can go from there to here and from here to there that is the time that uh, the rich man request uh, to send uh, Lazarus uh, to his uh, brother's house, uh, who have five brethren, uh, they may also not come to this place. Okay, verse 27 and 28, brother. Huh? Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them. List they also come into this place of tournament. And mm. Abraham said unto him, They mm. have Moses and the prophets, let mm. them hear them. Hear them. You see, I said, They have Abraham and the prophets, Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Then he says, No, not like that, Father Abraham. If one goes from the dead, uh, then definitely they would listen. And Abraham says, uh, If they don't listen to the Moses and the prophets, neither would they listen if uh, one goes from the dead. Here, uh, this one uh, incident uh, is generally uh, taken by Christians to believe that uh, the soul uh, goes to hell or heaven after death. You see, that means uh, if you are uh, rich, uh, you see, uh, people tell that uh, you need to give a lot to the Lord. Or else, uh, if you are living comfortably after being rich, uh, then uh, you will be tormented in your life. So, uh, always uh, it is uh, better that uh, you give everything to the Lord. So, for example, you see, uh, they take the example of the widow, you see, who was ready to sacrifice even uh, two mites, you see, for the Lord's uh, sake. But if you see, dear brethren, there are a lot of uh, questions uh, that comes uh, in this uh, story of the rich man and Lazarus. First of all, if you think uh, in a different way, a question comes to our mind uh, whether is it a real story or not. First point is that it says there was a rich man, you see, he was clothed in purple and fine linen and he ate uh, nicely every day. Here, this verse doesn't say that the rich man was a bad man, that he was a wicked man and uh, he used to live uh, a wicked life. You see, which simply says that he was uh, wearing good, good clothes, you see, eating good food, that's all. If this is the case, dear brethren, then uh, so many rich persons are blessed by the Lord in the Bible, like Abraham, Job, David, Solomon, all these are uh, rich people and many more in the Bible. And moreover, in Deuteronomy, the Lord says uh, that if you are obedient uh, to my words, then you shall be blessed above all the people of this earth. You see, uh, read, brother. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, brother. Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, 1 to read, brother. Huh. Uh, okay, sir. 1 to 3, no? Hmm. Yeah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken delightly unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, the observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Mm. And mm. all these blessings shall come on thee. See, and all these blessings shall come on thee. He shall bless you. A lot of abundance of riches, he says, dear brother. Therefore, if you say, the riches are actually the blessings of the Lord. So now can you say that uh, just because he was rich, uh, that he is a wicked person, and just because he was rich, uh, that he should be cast to hell? Okay? Read uh, Ecclesiastes 5.19. You see, who gives the riches and wealth uh, to enjoy? Read brother, Ecclesiastes 5.19. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth and health hath given him power to eat therefore thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. See? This is the gift of God. This is the gift of God, dear brethren. See, 
Therefore, we can't say that uh, the rich man, just because he was rich, he was a bad person. Therefore, if you see in the Bible, the riches actually comes from God only. Okay? Now, at uh, the door of a rich man was a beggar by name Lazarus. He was in such a pathetic condition that all his entire uh, body was uh, completely covered with wounds. And uh, the dog used to come and lick it himself. And he was daily waiting at his uh, gate to be fed by the crumbs uh, from the rich man's uh, table. It seems to be Therefore, if you see, uh, uh, here, nothing is given that the beggar Lazarus was a good person. You see, it's just given that he was a beggar, full of wounds. Then the dog used to come and uh, lick his wounds and he used to wait at the rich man's table. So if you see, in one way, actually, the rich man seems to be a good person. Why? If you see, the rich man is allowing the beggar Lazarus to stay at his gates and is feeding daily from his table. Imagine if you see or if you have any beggar in such a condition, a pathetic condition, full of wounds, daily dogs coming and licking his wound. Would you allow him to come near your house? No. No rich person would allow such a beggar to come daily at his house and keep waiting for food to be given. You see? Therefore, if you see in this angle, this rich man allowed him to be at his gates. So if you see, he seems to be a good person. Then the next, if you see, huh, how Lazarus became a beggar. Generally, dear brethren, you see, there is a, actually, uh, there are a lot of causes for one to become a beggar. See, there were wounds. If small wound would have appeared, Lazarus could have gone to the doctor and taken some medicines and cured himself. But he allowed the entire body to be wounded. And he was sitting at the rich man's gate just to be fed freely. And the dogs used to come and lick it himself. At least he could cast over the dogs. No, this seems to be that Lazarus himself seems to be a very lazy person, if you see. And moreover, in the same book of Deuteronomy, Verse 15 and 27, he says that uh, uh, the, your wounds will not be healed only if you are disobedient to the Lord. But once if you are disobedient to the Lord, your body will be fully covered of wounds. Therefore, if you see from the scriptures uh, uh, angle, you see, it is neither given that he is a good person or a bad person. But if you work out in a different angle in the entire Bible and see, the rich man seems to be a good person while beggar Lazarus seems to be a bad person. Okay, the next what happened if you see after death, uh, where did they go? You see, the rich man, he says, uh, both were buried uh, and the rich man uh, went to hell. And uh, the, you see, uh, the poor uh, beggar Lazarus went to where? If you see, generally would be tell that uh, he went to heaven. But is it given that he went to heaven? No. It is simply given that he went to Abraham's bosom. Now, just imagine, can all the beggars of this world go to Abraham's bosom? And if <laughs> this is taken literally and the real thing, then until we are beggar, like Lazarus, our body full of wounds, we can never go to heaven. Then all the rich person should go to what? Huh? Hell. Is this what the Bible says? And moreover, when he questions to Abraham. He says, uh, huh? Lord, uh, please uh, allow Lazarus uh, to come and uh, dip uh, the tip of his uh, finger in water and cool off my tongue. Just imagine, is uh, just one drop of water sufficient for a person to cool who is burning in hell? Imagine on a very, uh, you see, a sunny uh, summer. Huh? If you suddenly come to the house, uh, very thirsty and ask for water. If sister comes and gives us a very cold water from the fridge, opens the glass and dips her finger uh, in the glass and gives us just one drop of water to quench her thirst, is it uh, really sufficient? No, oh, dear brethren. And think about the person who is burning in hell. Dear brethren, so these things all uh, 
Now, prove that uh, there are a lot of questions in this uh, story. And moreover, Jesus uh, said that uh, no man has ascended to heaven. Okay. Then if this is the case, then uh, how is it possible? Okay. And moreover, here uh, it uh, says uh, that, uh, that once uh, you received uh, evil things, therefore, he is receiving, uh, you see, uh, good things. And uh, therefore, at that time, the rich man was receiving good things and now uh, he is uh, receiving uh, bad things. Uh, say, is it necessary that uh, once we receive the good blessings from the Lord, that we take uh, uh, the curses from the Lord? Is it necessary? No. Where does the scripture say so? And moreover, he says that uh, there is a huge gap between both of us. Uh, such a gap that nobody can pass away from here and from there to here. And uh, here uh, one wonder is that uh, uh, the rich man is speaking from hell. He is tormented in hell. And he is uh, seeing uh, Lazarus uh, sitting in Abraham's bosom so far uh, and uh, speaking to Abraham. This shows uh, that uh, hell and heaven are very next to each other, very close friends. Uh, imagine the brother and uh, all the persons who are tormented in hell, uh, you see, and daily they cry, uh, uh, you see, they're weeping and all should be heard the people in heaven. Then uh, uh, how can the people uh, in uh, heaven uh, uh, live peaceably? Hmm? Isn't it? Daily hearing the cries of all the people in hell. Dear brethren, so all these questions are there. If you see, uh, all these questions, uh, what do we come to know is that uh, this uh, incident that is mentioned in Luke chapter is not actually a literal statement, but it is a parable. Okay? But is it given in the Bible, if you see? Yes. Just read Luke 16 chapter, 19th verse. Is there a heading given before verse 19, brother, in your Bible? No, sir. There is no heading. Okay, there is no heading. Okay? But in various other Bibles, it is given that it is a parable. Okay? You have it in your Nepali Bible? Just check, brother. Yes, in Nepali Bible, there is. Ah, read the reading. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, here is Tony Manis and Lazar Lazarus. Ah, rich, ah. Rich, rich man and Lazarus. Ah, rich man Lazarus. Okay, good. There's no other reading given there. But yes. if you say in other Bible, it says uh, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. But uh, is it there in the Bible verse? Yes, it is there in the Bible verse only. Read verse 15. Uh, sorry, chapter 15, verses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Luke chapter 15, sir? Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmur, saying, This man revenged sinners and eat with them. And he speak this parable unto them, saying, ah, He spake a parable. They sp he spoke this parable unto them. Therefore, if you see from Luke 15 chapter, Jesus begins to speak the parables. So if you see Luke 15 chapter 4 to 6, first parable comes, the parable of the Lordship. Then Luke 15 chapter verse 8 and 9, the parable of the lost coin. Then uh, Luke 15, chapter uh, 11 to 32, the parable of the prodigal son. Then Luke 16, chapter 1 to 13, the parable of the, you see, uh, unjust steward. And after all these things, Jesus continues one more parable, that is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Therefore, if you see, the beginning of all these parables is in the same way. Okay? Read Luke, Luke 16, 19, brother. Huh? 1619. Hmm. There was a certain rich man. Ah, okay, rich sufficient. Man. Huh? There Are was you? a certain rich man. Now read Luke 15 4, brother. Huh? 15 4. Hmm. What man you have having a hundred sheep? Hmm. If you lose one of them, do okay. not leave. Now read Luke 15 11. Hmm. 15 11. Ah. Yeah. And he said, A certain man had two sons. See? Certain man. Here, how did he begin? A certain rich man. So, same way. How do we begin a story? Uh, once upon a time, there yeah. was a certain rich man. 
It is the same way that Jesus began all the parables. Therefore, if you see, this is also a parable. Read again, Luke 16, 1, brother. Luke 16, 1. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. There was a certain rich man, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. So, yeah. again, it is the same style of Jesus beginning a parable. Therefore, this is a parable. Now, let us understand the meaning of the parable. We all know, parable is not a direct statement. Whatever Jesus told in the parable, it had a different meaning altogether. Isn't it? The parable of the sower, he sowed a seed. It fell on four different grounds. The seed means God's word. It fell on four different grounds with the hard condition of the people, how they receive the truth, isn't it? So even this is also a parable. Now let us read what is the meaning of this parable, okay? First it says, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple. See, the color of the cloth is given here. It says, purple and fine linen. He ate nicely every day, it seems. Now what is the meaning of purple cloth in the Bible? If you see it, you ran purple represents royalty. Yeah. How? See, Jesus, once uh, before he was crucified, he was chastised by Pilate. And uh, Pilate uh, crowned him with a crown of thorns. And everybody, you see, teased him by putting a purple robe on him and called him the king of the Jews. Read with us. John 19, 2 and 3. John 19, Two, two and three. three. Hmm. John 14, 6, John 19, chapter, verse 2 and 3. Yes, yes sir. Uh, and the soldiers plated and plated and crowned of the thrones of thrones and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. King, and hail, hail, King of the Jews. King. Because in olden days, the king used to wear a purple robe. You see, a purple yeah. gown used to uh, be always behind him. So purple in the Bible represents royalty. Okay? So therefore, who is the people, who is the nation who was clothed with the royalty from God? Okay? We need to see from the Bible. And moreover, you see, what is the meaning of red, uh, white, uh, linen cloth? Let us read uh, Revelation 19.8, brother. Revelation 19.8. Uh. Uh, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteous of saints. See? The fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That means the white linen which the rich man is to wear represents the righteousness. See, dear brethren, uh, and uh, he ate uh, bread, this seems. What is the meaning of bread in the Bible? If you see, bread represents the word of God. We all know very well. Okay? Now, what is the meaning of righteousness, if you see? By the sacrifice given by the people of Israel, you see, they were justified before God. They were actually sinners like the uh, rest of the world. But because they were offering sacrifices to God, they used to get reconciled to God. So, they were justified to God. So if you see, who is this people? If you see, dear brethren, this is none other than the people of Israel. The people of Israel here represents the rich man who were rich with the blessings of God. You see, God gave them the commandments, God gave them the priests, the kings, the judges, the prophets, all the festivals, everything God had given to whom? The people of Israel. So the people of Israel here represents the rich man who are rich with the blessings of God, who were clothed with the kingdom. God's kingdom was typically established in Israel. They were justified before God. Read, brother. Romans 9, chapter, verse 4 and 5, brother. Romans 9. Hmm, 4 and 5. Okay. 9. Hmm. Four and five, no, sir? Mm. Yes. Who are Israelis, Israelites to whom patent uh, adoption and the glory and the covenants that, and the giving of the law and the service of God and promise and the promises? Mm. Whose are the fathers of 
and the of whom and concerning the face of Christ came, who who is over all God blessed for ever. Amen. You see, huh? who are the people of Israel? And to them were given the covenants. Uh, you see, and to them were given the law, the services of God, the fathers, the prophets, everything. Ultimately, God even sent uh, his son Jesus, Sarah, to the people of Israel. Therefore, this uh, rich man here uh, represents the people of uh, Israel. Okay. So, what is the meaning of, uh, uh, you see, you can read one more verse, brother. Almost 3 2, brother. Almost 3 2. Uh. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Mm, I will punish you for all your iniquities, sir. I have known you of all the families of the earth. Therefore, this verse clearly shows that, uh, you see, uh, Israel was selected from all the families of the world. In the entire world who were rich with the blessings of God, if you see, the nation of Israel. Who is the poor man? It is none other than the Gentiles. They were in a beggarly condition. You see, the dogs used to come and lick them and his body is full of sores. Therefore, if you see, he was desiring to be eating of the bread that fell from a rich man's table. Okay? And dogs used to come and uh, you see, lick him, him sir. Comfort him. So what is the meaning of this one? If you see, dear brethren, the Gentiles uh, who were totally covered, uh, their body were totally wounded by the beggarly elements uh, which they were actually doing, uh, like a uh, sati system, nude worship, you see, idol worship. All these things uh, was actually, you see, a dead-like uh, thing, a beggarly-like thing. Therefore, if you see, the dogs, uh, uh, the dogs used to come and lick him. In the Bible, if you see, the dogs are called actually unclean animals. In Leviticus 11 chapter, if you see, the dogs are actually compared to what? Dog? Compared to unclean animals in the Bible. You see, therefore, these are the Gentiles. These unclean things, uh, it used to comfort them. It used to always, uh, you see, comfort them and uh, always, uh, you see, uh, very good uh, to them that uh, they are doing all this uh, evil things and all. Therefore, if you see, this beggar actually represents uh, none other than the Gentile nation. Okay, let us read one verse in, uh, um, let us read one verse in Galatians. One minute. Uh, Galatians chapter 4. Uh, in the meantime, you can read Ephesians 2nd chapter. Sir. Ephesians 2nd yeah. chapter. 12. 12 uh, or 13. Two, second chapter, 12 and 13. Huh? Yeah. That at that time, yeah, were without Christ being aliens from the co commonwealth of Israel and strangers uh, from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Hmm. But, hmm. but now in Christ Jesus, yeah, you who sometimes were far off are made rich high by the blood of Christ. We were very far from God. We used to never know God. We were aliens. We were strangers. We were like beggars. We did not have any contact with God. You see, the brethren, the Gentiles were like that. that year. Then they were like beggars. Read it. Galatians 4, brother. Galatians 4, 9 uh, and 10. Galatians 4, 4 9. 10. Mm. Okay. Um, four nine, but now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God. How turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, where unto you desire again to be in bondage? You see, where again you turn to the beggarly elements? Uh, what is the beggarly elements? Continue, brother. Huh? Yeah, observe days. And months and times and years. Yes, yeah, see, you observe days, uh, months, uh, times, and years, a lot of festivals. No? This is the beggarly condition of the Gentiles. Uh, you see, uh, then uh, what happened to him, sir? Dear brethren, a time came, you see, that uh, both the people were dead, it seems. 
Eh? Both the people what happened? They did it seems so. What is the meaning of this one? That means both the people time expired. You see, that means what? The Jewish people they died to the favor of God. Once they crucified Christ on the cross, what happened? The people of Israel as a nation, they were rejected. And then, since then, the favor was given to the Gentiles. So there what happened? The people of Israel ended to the period of God's favor and the Gentiles ended to the period of God's disfavor. So since then, the Gentiles began to receive the favor of God and the Jewish people began to receive the disfavor of God. Let us read Matthew 23, 37. Matthew, Matthew. Huh, 23, 37, brother. Huh? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophet and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hand gathered her sickness, sick, chickens under wings, oh. and ye would not. And you would not, you would not, you would not come. Therefore, Israel was rejected. You see, continue, brother. Next verse, 38. Huh? Yeah, 38. Huh. Twenty-three, thirty-eight. Hmm. Behold, your house is left unto your desolate. Desolate. Israel was rejected. Since then, the favor began to go to the Gentiles. Read Acts thirteen forty-six. Acts thirteen forty-six. Thirteen forty-six. No, sir. Hmm, correct, correct. 46. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then Paul and Barnabas waxed blood and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Huh. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy for of everlasting life, though we turn to the Gentiles. Gentiles, you are unworthy of the everlasting life. So you're dead. So you are dead to God's grace. And the favor began to come to the Gentiles. Since then, they began to live in the sight of God. Therefore, if you see the brand, that uh, beggar was waiting to be fed from the bread that fell from the table of the rich man. So the rich man means the people of Israel. The beggar means the Gentiles. The Gentiles were waiting to get a small little bit favors from the Lord, from the Table of the Lord. They were expecting at least some small, small blessings. They were waiting at the gate. Therefore, you see, once what happened, uh, Jesus uh, was uh, on the way to Jerusalem. A, a woman from Canaan, not a Jew, but a Gentile, she came and begged the Lord uh, to have mercy on her and to cure uh, his uh, son with devil. You see, and that time uh, Jesus said that, uh, no, I can't do this one because I'm sent only to the Lordship of the house of Israel. But uh, here, that woman requested, uh, saying, Lord, uh, please. And Jesus says, uh, you see, uh, it is not good uh, to cast uh, the bread uh, that is meant for the children to the dogs. Uh, and that is the way, and that is the time that uh, she uses the word saying, Lord, correct. Uh, but uh, even the dogs uh, eat uh, na, the crumbs uh, that are fallen from the master's table. So let us read Matthew 15 chapter, verse 24 to 26. 24, 25, 26. Uh. Matthew 15. Matthew 15 chapter, verse 24 to 26. Okay. And 27 also. Hmm. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came Sis and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread 
and to cast it to dogs. You see, it is not good to cast uh, it to the dogs. To take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Okay, then. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. See, exactly the same word that comes in the parable, dear brother. That means these Gentiles were as uh, dogs uh, and uh, the rich man was who? The people of Israel. Seeing her faith, uh, Jesus granted her wish. Uh, therefore, if you see, dear brother, and both the people died. Uh, that means uh, the, paper, the period of favor and disfavor ended. So, ultimately, what happened? If you see, you see, the beggar was carried to where? Abraham's bosom, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of Abraham's bosom? Now, what is the meaning of Abraham in the Bible? If you see, dear brother, and Abraham in the Bible represents uh, our heavenly father. How? You see, Abraham sacrificed his only son, Isaac. Correct now? Huh? Correct now? Yes. But uh, Isaac uh, was received back to life. Even as he was uh, uh, trying to kill his son, you see, God uh, told, stop. That is the way, similarly. God gave his only begotten son, Jesus. <laughs> but what happened? Uh, Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Therefore, Abraham means our, you see, heavenly father. You see, therefore, in the Bible, you see, Abraham represents God. So there, if you see, Abraham's bosom is himself. Now, who is in the bosom of God? God's bosom means what, you know? Who? Huh? His son only sits in his bosom. You know, bosom, you see, who can carry? Huh? Everybody. No. You see, Generally, their own children are in their bosom. So similarly, Jesus also was in the bosom of the Father, it seems. Read, brother. Uh, John, first chapter, brother. John, chapter 1. One minute. John, chapter 1. John, chapter 1. Verse 18 first you read, then verse 12 you read. Okay. 18. Ah. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Hmm. See? Now, the only Son who is in the bosom of the Father. So what is the meaning of bosom of the Father? Literally, does it mean that Jesus was sitting in God's bosom? No. It means... Jesus was the son of God. So similarly, here Abraham's bosom means the Gentiles were given the opportunity to become the sons of God. John 1, 12. John 1st chapter verse 12. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the son of God Ooh. even to them hmm. that believe on his name. To see? Even to everybody who believes on his name, whosoever believes on his name, they are given the opportunity to be the sons of God. Therefore, you see, Lazarus died and the angels came and took them, it seems. It means the apostles, through the apostles, the gospel went to the Gentiles and Gentiles came to the truth. While the Gentiles came to truth, what happened to, you see, the rich man? The rich man was suffering in hell with torments in himself. What is the meaning of this one? If you see the the people of Israel suffered a lot after 70 AD when they crucified our Lord Jesus on the cross. You see, when uh, Pilate uh, told, uh, I am innocent of this man's blood, uh, immediately the people of Israel said, uh, let his blood be upon us and our children. So similarly what happened? All the penalty, you see, all the guiltiness of killing Jesus came upon the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel was completely destroyed in 70 AD. Let us read Matthew 27, 25, brother. Matthew 27, 25, brother. Huh? Matthew 27, 25. Hmm. Matthew 25, no, sir? Hmm. Yeah. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Hmm. You see, 
let this blood be upon us and our children so similarly what happened god's entire wrath completely came upon the nation of israel the other verses also, you can note it down but let us read one more verse thessalonians come to the book of thessalonians with us come to the book of thessalonians you see first thessalonians second chapter first thessalonians second chapter verse 16 brother ha huh? yes First Thessalonian two sixteen two sixteen okay forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all all way and for he wrath for the wrath is come upon them to be uttermost see what happens ah huh? israel were forbidding, forbidding to speak to the gentiles that they might be saved so what is happening they are filling up the sins always for the wrath is come completely upon the nation of israel so the nation of israel was completely destroyed in 70 ad and uh, after the death uh, after the rich man's death what happened to him sir he was in torment he requested a small request Of just a drop of water. What is the meaning of this one? If you see the brain, after the nation of Israel were destroyed in 70 AD, they were scattered in all the world. You see, and they were tormented in various ways, especially during the days of Hitler, who systematically killed 60 lakh Jews. You see, the Jews from all over the European continent were gathered in you see gas chambers, Holocaust, and. Uh, they were systematically as you say tortured they were they were never given proper food not even proper food, uh, water to drink they were allowed to die in their own dirt you see you can see some of the photos you see all the dead bodies uh, were thrown like a dung and you saw you know all their uh, skin were peeled and uh, uh, leather garments uh, used to be made uh, for the german army ships this all the, the people of israel suffered you see and that is the time that uh, the jewish people requested small favor from the world powers a small favor means what just a drop of water but uh, none of them came to the help of the jewish nation you see you know what is the reply huh? abraham gave he said no son huh? you had a good time and that is the time that he had a bad time now he is having a good time and you are having a bad time what is the meaning of that one if you see there was a jewish age in god's plan the rich man was totally blessed the jewish nation was totally blessed but they lost all these things sir because of disobedient and during that time gentiles did not have favor from god they were only fed with the crumbs but now what happened now the favor is completely given to the gentiles and this is the time that the jewish people are totally cast off therefore if you see he says that uh, nobody can come from here to there or from there to here what is the meaning of that one that means even today the jewish people still believe in the law they don't believe that jesus is the messiah hence what has happened if you see the brain huh? the huge gap between the huh, the jewish people and the christians are still there because of the law why They still believe in the law. Therefore, nobody can come from the people who believing the law. They can never come to the grace and truth and believe Jesus Christ until they believe a Jesus is the Messiah. Therefore, this gap is always there. Let us read a few verses were given to us in Ephesians. You see. Uh, Ephesians second chapter with us. Ephesians second chapter verses twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen with us. Ah, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Fourteen. Hmm. but now in christ jesus you who sometimes were far off and made nick by the blood of christ See, we were the gentiles were far from god but 
because of jesus we are made near to god it seems next continue brother ah uh, 14 hmm. for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us see the middle wall of partition that huge gap was there no he has broken it he has bridged it who jesus so if you believe in jesus only that gap is broken that wall is broken you made one or is still a gap is there this gap is still there in the psychology of the jewish people because they still believe in allah they don't believe that jesus is the messiah continue with the next huh? 15 having abolished in his place the uh, enmity even the law of commandments contained in or ordinance for to make in himself of twain of uh, one new man so making peace See, one new man both gaps were covered but made one but uh, unfortunately those who don't believe it in jesus still that gap is there therefore he said nobody can come from the law and to the believe in jesus until you accept jesus as a messiah therefore dear brethren huh? he says send a huh? a dead person to where my father's house there how many brothers are there five brothers are there so what is the, what is the meaning of this five brethren what is the meaning of this one dear brethren if you see actually huh? five means what in israel israel had actually 12 tribes isn't it correct na israel yeah, yes, was made of 12 tribes sir huh? once after the death of solomon this was divided into two parts two tribes came to be one nation and the 10 tribes came to be one nation so therefore if you see israel was divided into two parts after the death of solomon read first kings 1131 brother first kings 1131 and he said to jeroboam take the 10 pieces for thus said the lord the god of israel behold i will rend the kingdom out of the hand of solomon and will give 10 tribes to thee ah i will give 10 tribes to thee therefore two tribes become one nation so 10 tribes become how many five so that is the five brothers the rest of israel okay if you go and say to the jewish people today will they believe no they won't believe who has to go is him sir huh? a one from the dead died. so who is the dead person if you see the christians huh? the christians were dead to the world you see we are dead in christ see read brother colossians 3 3 brother colossians 3 3 brother ha huh? colossians 3 3 no mm-hmm. or you are dead and your life is hid with christ in see we are dead uh, these are the dead uh, christians uh, who are dead to the world you see if we go and tell to the jewish people will they listen they won't listen what did abraham say if they did not listen to huh, prophets and the moses then surely they would not listen to one who raised from the dead also what is the meaning of this one read john 6 chapter was 46 and 47 john 5th chapter brother sorry john 5th chapter 46 and 47 john 5th chapter 46 47 for had you believed moses you would have believed me ah. for he wrote of me ah. ah. but if you believe not his writings how shall you believe my words how shall you believe then if a dead person if a christians go and tell to the jewish people they listen they won't listen that is what the meaning of this parable therefore this parable is uh, neither saying about a dead person coming back to life but is actually speaking about the, the jewish nation who lost their favor and uh, since then the gentiles uh, began to get the favor of the lord okay so this word actually a parable is not a literal statement so here ends the complete uh, subject of soul so next week we'll uh, 
go to the free tour to hell. Okay? We pack your baggages and everything and come. So we'll go to <laughs> hell and visit hell and come. Okay, brother? Okay, sir. So any doubts in today's class? No, sir. <laughs>